Welcome to Getting Automated, and today we're going to go over how you can dominate every call by providing opinionated and personalized feedback to your support and sales team members based on recent calls that they've had. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Anyone that runs a business knows the time and effort that's put in to train up employees to ensure that they're ready to go ahead and talk with customers. Whether it's the sales team or the support team, it really doesn't matter. There's still a lot of time that goes into making sure that they can empathize with the customer, hear their problems, and ultimately support them in the ways that they need to be supported. And so oftentimes what this looks like is having that actual employee or employees shadow you on a number of calls. And then from there, you have to actually go and sit with them on calls or review their calls after the fact to ensure that they are actually meeting the expectations that you've set forth with them for your customers. And so what this typically translates to is a lot of calls to review and never enough time to do it. And so it's an unscalable workload that ultimately leads to less than ideal feedback and oftentimes delayed. A call that happened on Monday may not even be reviewed till Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And at that point, that's additional days of calls that probably were suboptimal that you weren't able to go ahead and provide that feedback for. Not only does this pose a significant brand risk, but it also kind of limits the information that you're hearing from your customers and the insights that you can go ahead and extract from that. So whether that's a lack of training around a specific area that you need to go ahead and work with your team on or some new insights within an industry or pain points that your customers are having, all this information gets lost in calls when you're not on them and you're not able to actually hear kind of what people are saying and figure out how you can then better handle those calls going forward. So that's what we're trying to do today is solve the manual call review problem and figure out how we can use N8N and AI to actually go ahead and fix this for us. To solve this, we've built out a workflow that goes ahead and as calls come in, it goes ahead and it classifies the call by the call type. And then based on that call type, applies specific criteria as to what it expects to happen in that call and rates the actual call performance and saves it out to Google Sheets for your review later to go ahead and not only provide you the feedback of how the call went if you weren't on there, but also the representative to understand what they can do better and provide feedback so that way they can continually improve without you having to weigh in and review the transcript yourself. We've built that all out in N8N and we have a live demo as part of this today. As a quick aside, I want to tell you who I am and what I do. I'm Hunter Sneed, the creator of Getting Automated. Getting Automated is intended to provide small and medium-sized businesses with the resources they need to go ahead and successfully implement AI and automation solutions within their business in a practical way. Additionally, I run an automation consulting business called Workflowsy that goes ahead and actually performs the automation consulting services and implementation services for those who don't want to implement it themselves. Okay, back to the workflow. So I use a tool called circleback.ai which is one of many AI note takers out there that goes ahead and transcribes the notes and provides a summary at the end. I found that Circleback's transcription and summary abilities is better than anything else I've tried, so that's why I landed on it. But really the note taking app doesn't matter here as long as it can go ahead and send a webhook after the call. And that's something that's pretty common with just about all these AI note takers that exist today. And so basically what happens is when my call ends, Circleback goes ahead and sends a webhook to NADEN. And in that webhook, it contains information about the transcript from the call. And so what I'm able to do is actually take that transcript information and run some evaluations against it to determine what type of call it is. And then from there, I'm able to make a classification and provide really detailed AI feedback for the call type based on what it is. So the criteria that I have for something like a sales call is gonna be really different than the criteria I have for a customer support call or a daily standup. And so basically I go ahead and I generate this feedback and some scores, and then I go ahead and I write that all out to Google Sheets. And then Google Sheets could then be shared with all of your team members, could be a document that you just have access to yourself to go ahead and see the feedback. It's really up to you what you do at that point. And so it's a really simple integration that solves a pretty significant problem in terms of manual time to review these calls, especially when you get really fine grained about the criteria you're evaluating against and can go ahead and check for that within your calls. You may be asking why Google Sheets? And I think that's a great question. For this specific automation, it was the right tool for the job. It's easy to use, there's minimal configuration time, and it outputted the information I needed in a structured format that works for me. You could definitely use something like a SQL database or Airtable or Notion or whatever your data tool of choice is, but Google Sheets got the job done and I'm pretty happy with it so far. All right, so let me go ahead and flip over to Circleback. So Circleback allows you to go ahead and create a number of different automations and allows you to also natively send to first party tools that you may already be using. And so something like a Notion, a Slack, a Linear, you can go ahead and send notes there by default. 
That said, NADN isn't listed here, and so I just opted for the send a webhook request. Now, what you can do in here is you can define an endpoint with an N8N, and I'll show you that in just a second, of where you actually want to send those notes. And then you can also choose what to include. In my case, I really only care about the transcript, so that's all that I'm sending. I went ahead and set this up, and I've set up a corresponding workflow with an N8N. So if I go ahead and I flip over to N8N, you'll see that I have a circle back webhook. This is just a normal webhook node with an N8N. And what I have in here is I've plugged in the test URL and I've just set it up to go ahead and accept a post method. And so if I go ahead and I flip back to circle back, what you'll see is that webhook test is the actual URL that I have in place here. And so what comes after that is a couple things. I set some variables just as some basic business context about the business that I actually run. So in my case, I put in Workflowsy and some background as it's an AI consulting business and the kind of high level overview of the services that it actually provides. Then what I've done is I've actually cleaned up the transcript. The transcript from how it comes in for, from Circleback is a little wonky in terms of the actual formatting. So you can see here where it actually has the speaker text timestamp, but I wanted to have it condensed in a way that was a little bit more consumable for the AI. So I went ahead and I did that within my actual set variables and then I also set a call ID, a call title, and a call date, as well as a call owner. And these are all just static variables that I'm setting once, and that way I can go ahead and pass it into different parts of my workflow later on. So once I've done that, I have a really, really simple OpenAI request that I make here. And so basically what it is, is I'm asking it to go ahead and classify the call based on a couple of different criteria that I provided. And so you can see in here, I've got stuff around a sales call, I've got cold outreach, troubleshooting, complaint, escalations, onboarding, so on and so forth. And so I specify what the output value will be, and I also specify down here what the output structure should be. And so that way I have a consistent response each time that I can go ahead and parse in the later steps of my workflow. So it goes ahead and it will classify the call type, and then from here I have a switch with an NADN. And basically what this switch is, is it's just looking for the call type. So it's checking to see if the output from the prior node, which again is the OpenAI evaluation, if it's set to sales, cold, customer support, complaint, or anything else that matches one of the conditions. And so based on what it's set to, it's gonna route the call accordingly and each one of these OpenAI nodes that you see up here has different instructions and scoring criteria that goes ahead and plays into how it's actually recorded within the Google Sheet. And so if we go ahead and we take a look at this and we pull up the actual system instructions, what we'll see is I'm mapping to a couple different criteria again specific for sales. So I'm scoring how the rapport was developed within the relationship. I'm scoring on discovery. I'm scoring on the value prop, objection handling, and the closed next steps. And so these are all kind of common criteria that you may want to look for within a call. You could even have it where you have a static list of questions that you expect a sales rep to ask, such as, do they have budget for this? When do they need to close by? Do they have any concerns? And if you had those, you could have it where it returns a true or false value back that you could then go and see, did my representative ask these questions throughout the call and have a way to make sure that you're having consistency across not only all your sales calls, but all your reps as well. And so this is really open to your own kind of business requirements, but basically you can specify what you're looking for here. And then with these, I'm actually assigning a score from one to five. And I'm also defining a JSON structure that will go ahead and output that and the kind of expected value based on the performance of the call. One additional thing I'm also passing in is I'm passing in the business background. So that way OpenAI knows a little bit more about the business and that I'm running and can contextualize the questions and answers a little bit more based on that. And then in the user prompt, all I'm doing is basically passing in the, some of the static values that I had mentioned before, as well as the transcript. And so it's really pretty simple. It's just setting up what you're looking for, the format you expect it out in, and then actually passing in the necessary information for OpenAI to make that evaluation. And then last but not least, is I'm actually going and I'm mapping that to a specific document within my Google Drive. So within Google Drive, I've set up a document that has a tab for each different type of call, and it records all those fields that should look familiar, such as the call ID, the subject, the date, the time, the transcript, and then the scores based on how that call actually went. And so within this, I go ahead and I actually map back to that in N8N. And so you can see I'm matching on the call ID because that's something that should be consistent and shouldn't change. And then I'm actually going and I'm passing in the call subject, the time, the owner, the transcripts, 
and I'm passing in the scores from that OpenAI evaluation that I did in the previous node to go ahead and represent that there. And so to actually see this thing in action, what we can do is I can say test work workflow, and then I can hop back over into Circleback, and it lets me send the most recent meeting recording that I have, which in my case was a sales call. So we'll go ahead and I'll do that. It does take a second for circle back to send. We'll go ahead and pop back over to N8N in just a second. We see that it was sent. And what we can see here is it's now running and it's doing that evaluation. One thing I do wanna call out is I'm using different models within OpenAI to actually do the initial classification and then the actual evaluation. I think the evaluation model in terms of the scoring should be a more sophisticated model. So I'm using O3 mini Whereas for the classification, I'm just using, um, let me see, I'm using 40 mini. And so with that, what you can see here is you'll see the responses that I get back where it says four, 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 five, and then it provides some, some additional instructions for how I could improve the call going forward. And so with that, why don't I go ahead and I'll flip back over to the actual Google sheet and you'll see that all of that's recorded here. And so what's nice about this is you can set this up once and any call going forward will automatically be recorded here. And if it doesn't match anything within your N8N kind of call scoring structure, it'll just go to this non-applicable route, which isn't linked to anything. And the workflow will just go ahead and not execute at that point. And so it's a really easy way to kind of have a robust system to evaluate different call types and make sure that again, the feedback and the kind of expected outcomes as well as expected questions and process and procedure that you expect within a call, whether it's for yourself or for your reps, is all being followed on a consistent basis. And so let's go ahead and we'll flip back to the presentation and talk about a little bit more of why this matters and how you could actually go about this yourself. So the real world benefits are, again, the feedback's immediate. And so it's not something where you have to go and wait for your one-on-one -on -one with that actual representative to be able to provide them the feedback of, hey, you should have asked what their budget is or when the project needs to be closed by or if there's any additional signers or anything else like that. You're able to go ahead and provide that based on the criteria that you define upfront. And so you can get as granular as you want to. You could have 10, 20, 30 different criteria that you're actually looking for in a specific call to make sure again that you're having the same level of consistency that you would expect for your representatives. From there, it also allows managers and owners to go ahead and not have to be as involved. If there's something that's blatantly missing in a call, it's pretty easy to go ahead and have that called out within this tool and the feedback that you see within Google Sheets, rather than having to wait for the manager to actually review it themselves, read the transcripts, listen back to it, and provide that feedback. This also allows data collection around the actual insights of what's happening on the call. So what you can do is you can take all these transcripts and then if you wanted to go ahead and pass it into something like GPT-01 Mini or Grok or anything else like that, you can go ahead and do that and say, hey, look for patterns for me across these calls. And so maybe there's patterns that you're not noticing that you can go ahead and do some data analytics around to be able to drive pattern recognition and again, kind of refine your sales process or support process further. And then last but not least, it scales. We've already been over that. I won't go into that any further. So where can you take this? This is really kind of the beginning of where this automation goes. There's so many different ways that you can take this. Again, I just talked about advanced analytics. It could be something where if there's a certain score that's below a threshold, it could automatically email a manager and say, hey, so-and-so did not go ahead and meet the criteria or meet the expectations in this area of the call. Go ahead and follow up with them. Multi-language support would be super easy to go ahead and build into this. And then CRM integration, that's a given. If you want to go ahead and have all this work its way back to Salesforce or HubSpot or anything that you use, that would be as simple as an API call that's added within your N8N workflow to go ahead and publish that data there, especially if it's not a supported provider within your actual AI note taker tool. You're probably wondering what this actually costs. And the good news is not much. With this, you're going to pay for the license that you likely were already paying for with the actual AI note taker app. So in my case, Circleback is about $25 a month. Again, I think it's well worth it. It pays for itself in just a couple calls, if not a single call. And so you're paying for that already. The Google Sheets and Workspace, again, you're probably paying for that already as well, but you can also sign up for a Gmail account if you just wanted to test it out and go ahead and use the Google Drive or Google Sheets integration right out of the gate. And it's super easy to go ahead and get started with that just to see if it'll fit your use case. N8N, again, if you already have N8N set up, there's no additional cost. This is just another workflow that's running within N8N. 
And the open AI cost is really going to depend on what you're actually spending in terms of how many calls you're analyzing, the duration of call and the model that you're using. In most cases, a lot of these transcripts revaluations are probably pennies if not less, depending on the model that you're using. So it really shouldn't be a significant cost unless you're doing hundreds, if not thousands of calls that you're evaluating on a regular basis, which at that point, you're probably getting enough data analytics from that to justify the AI cost involved with, again, the API call to OpenAI. This brings us to if you actually wanted to go and get started and do this yourself. It's really actually pretty straightforward. What you want to do as a starting point is you want to define your criteria and your sheets for what you actually expect out from the evaluation. And what that means is going ahead and defining how you want to go ahead and rank different capabilities within the call, how you want to go ahead and look for maybe specific questions, how you want to go ahead and define what the difference is between different types of sales calls. I have one sales call in my specific example, but you could have a different type of scoring for a discovery sales call versus a mid-stage sales call versus kind of a closing stage call, like a 90% sales call. And so you can define all the criteria and the different types of calls that you're looking to go ahead and vet for and define that within the sheet. And then from there, that will inform the prompts that you actually create for OpenAI to go ahead and get you that consistent scoring response back that you can use to actually go and input into the sheet that you just created. With that, I typically recommend to start with some sort of pilot group with any automation, you typically don't want to roll it out to everyone at once. You want to go ahead and make sure that you test it with a couple users that are comfortable with it, that know what's going on. And then from there, make the broader announcement and socialization that, hey, we're going ahead and rolling this out for the broader sales team, broader support team, broader customer success team, whatever it may be. And then the documentation and sharing, again, documentation is critical for any workload. Um, you want to go ahead and make sure that you have documentation of how it works, how it's intended to be used. So that way, if anyone needs to go ahead and make modifications to it later, it's easier for them to do so within the business. If you liked this workflow, I've got great news for you because the Getting Automated community has officially launched. This community is intended for 250 dedicated builders who want to go ahead and introduce or accelerate their AI adoption within their business or the business they're working for in a meaningful way. It's not a get rich quick. It's not a, here's how to make $10,000 in 30 days. This is a, a community for builders that want to roll their sleeves up and learn from each other and get access to a huge library of resources from workflow templates, guides, and different trainings to go ahead and be able to avoid some of the growing pains of implementing AI at scale in a meaningful way in your business through the different resources and events and whatnot that will be held. So again, if you're interested, would love to see you there. I hold weekly events and love to meet one-on-one -on -one with different members. So please go ahead and check it out and join if you think it's a good fit. That being said, thank you so much for watching. Your support means the world to me. Anything like a like, a subscribe, or getting in contact with me really means the world to me. Thank you so much for watching. I've got so many more ideas for videos to share, and this is just the start. So go ahead and like and subscribe and check back often for more videos as I'll continue to bring more business-focused AI and automation videos to you in the near future. If you want to go ahead and get in touch with me, go ahead and, and find me on my website at gettingautomated.com or send me an email at hunter at getting automated or even join the community. Whatever works, go ahead and set up time with me and please go ahead and start building today. It's the best way to learn how you can use AI and automation in a meaningful way.